looked at Ephesians, when we were looking at this during the time, and I think I spelled Ephesians wrong, this was written uh, approximately 62 AD, that's after the death of Christ, written by Paul. Paul probably talked to a great deal of the apostles. But when I researched in the Bible, I found that there were many, many verses that reflect to this uh, God knowing us before we were created. And you find also in Jeremiah 1 and 5. Some of you remember, this is where God told Jeremiah, before you was born, I knew you and formed you. Uh, so even though you follow some of the scriptures and it goes back, it says that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. When we speak of that, that meant that even though we had not even yet been placed in our mother's womb to be born, that God knew us before that time. And that shows forth an, an amazing God. You'll find scriptures in Isaiah 49, Ephesians 1, Job 31, Psalms 139. Galatians, the first chapter, Psalms, the 139th, uh, Psalm, Psalms, the 22nd, John 17, Ephesians, the second, Ephesians, the first chapter, and as I, Isaiah 44. There's approximately about 60 additional ones that I have not spoken of, but the one that I am going to talk about today is Ephesians 1, starting at verse 1, where Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are in Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, or according as he has chosen us in him before. Now, this is what caught my attention. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. There is so much in this scripture here that we can go back. So a lot of this we've covered in previous uh, lessons that we've studied. Uh, speaking of God and his forgiveness and according that we're saved by his grace. Uh, that God in the beginning created us. We know that God is so awesome that for us to understand everything that he says and done is very complicated. But verse five says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, brings about some confusion to some that say that if God has already predestinated us into the life with Christ, and we already saved, does that mean that there are those who are not saved, that are not predestinated to be with Christ, were already given uh, the, 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 uh, the decision to go to hell uh, that prepared for Satan and his angels? Uh, it's necessary to make sure that we are not confused and understanding that God does not uh, permit us, but he uh, he permits us, but he doesn't direct us. We are either saved or unsaved by our own will. Uh, it is, it's just that God, being who he is, already knows what you're going to do before the time comes. Remember, the Bible says that he is Alpha 
and omega, the beginning and the end. Well, you know that if he is alpha and omega, then you know that he already knows the beginning and the end and everything that's in between it. It's already accomplished because he's already written the story. So only thing that we're doing is living during the time of finishing what the story will become, but it is up to you, uh, your own decision, not that you were predestinated purposely just to go to heaven, but God already knows in advance your decision before you go that you're going to accept him or not. It says in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. This is uh, explaining what is available for us when we leave this earth to be with Christ in heaven that we have spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Some religions only talk about uh, blessings uh, that's being physical and here on earth. Uh, in our studies, we find that we need to prepare for our heavenly home uh, as, just as much as we are preparing for our life here on earth. So God is already knowing us, has already made provision for us that through our works uh, that we do, we will be uh, rewarded for it. Our works, we know that through our studies, is not what saves us. But our works are necessary for us to be able to enjoy the benefits of our heavenly home. That's why it says, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And if you're born again and in Christ, you will not receive those spiritual blessings. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Think of yourselves individually. Over 6,000 years ago, when God established a Garden of Eden, that you were already in his mind. He already knew your name, already knew where you would live. He already knew those who would die, the death, the day that it would take place, uh, knew when you get married, knew when you would be born, knew where you would work. Now, just look at this closely. If God knows all of that, those secret thoughts that you thought nobody else knew, he knows that. Yes, he does. We must be careful, especially when it says that we have angels around us that's, that's there for us. Then our angels that are there for us are watching everything we say, all the places we go. And it's a challenge to make sure that we don't offend them by our behavior, our words. Some people don't think that they are uh, under any obligation or observation of any kind, but God can see all. And he has those there prepared for you. Your blessings sometimes and how you got over is because the angels that were standing by you took care of you, sheltered yes, you. So God knew that you had need of these things before the time comes. And just like there are blessings on earth for you, there are blessings already laid out before your path ahead of you that you don't know about, but God knew that you would need them before you got there and had them waiting for you to arrive. That's why Christians cannot give up. We cannot give up hope. We always pray and ask God for direction because God is already providing a way for us to escape our issues in life, our trials and tribulations, our temptation. God just needs us to be focused upon him. Remember the scripture says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So it's, a, it's great to know that you got a God that loves you so much that before you were born, he already made all the provisions necessary for you to make it through this life. Mm -hmm. Some people say, well, well, why would he allow me to suffer things? Remember, there are some things that we suffer are those because of our disobedience. And we chose the path in which we go. Uh, in my past life, I am very grateful that God put a roadblock in some of my past. 
because now if I look bad, back, I can see that path was not a path where I should have gone. Those were decisions I should not have made. But God's love, knowing that what we would need in times yet to come, he had already provided for us. That's why verse 4 says, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. When we pray, that's why it's necessary that we pray in Jesus' name. Or we, and we pray, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. When we learn to pray within the will of the Father, there's no question what's going to be done because if it's in the will of the Father, it's going to happen. It's already planned. It's already made. But when a, a person is functioning outside of the will of God, we ask for things and we do things that's not his will. He is not going to bless you with something that's not his will. Amen. So when we pray, even as we pray for our prayer list, the prayer that we went through, we already know that God's got it. But God has also instructed us to pray ye one for another. Remember, Ooh. the Bible also says that the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. So mm -hmm. we have the responsibility to put God's word in action through our life. It's not that we are doing anything on our own. We're operating through the will of Christ who we live in. Just like it says here in verse four, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. How is that done? Because when Jesus died, he died for our sins. He washed us in his blood. Because he died for us, we are now justified. We are glorified through the blood in, in, uh, of Jesus. We are now uh, uh, not only justified, we are uh, uh, redeemed. And the only one that can redeem us is Christ Jesus through his blood. And because of all of this, these things are not just happened by circumstance. But because God already knew that they would happen, and we are, are just doing the things which has already been predestinated for us to do in our life. Verse 5 says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. He adopted us. He gave us permission to be part of him according to his will and for his purpose that we live. We don't live for ourselves. We live unto God. And to be uh, living unto God, that means we live one another. The question was asked a few weeks ago. Am I my brother's keepers? The answer to that is yes, we are our brother's keepers. We must always be prepared to do those things which God has given direction for us to do. Not by circumstance, not by accident, not because somebody just had a great, bright idea, but because in God's pleasure and within God's will, we're following what uh, uh, Christ has asked us to do. About a month and a half ago, we studied and read how Jesus is the split image of, of God, the, the Father, the Creator, the split image, and it stated there that he does not do that of his own will, but of the will of his father. That's what Jesus does. That's why he is an example of God in the flesh, because he's not here in, for himself. He's not here because he's the son. He's not here because his name is Jesus. He is here for the purpose of God to be an example, an illustration, uh, 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 God in action to Jesus in the flesh. Well, in that same manner is why we were chosen and we're not here for our own. So everything that Christ thinks of and wants to do, that's how our minds are supposed to be developed to move and think according to Christ Jesus for our lives. Remember, it's by him we're saved. If it was not by him we were saved, we would all be lost and without hope. Verse 6 says, to the praise 
of the glory of his grace. Why is there praise to the glory of his grace? Because the Bible tells us by grace, we are saved. It's by grace of God that we have been transferred from a life of lost and sinful ways into the, the spiritual life of Christ to be able to live in Christ because of Christ's blood. That's why the Bible tells us that it's his grace that we are saved. Verse 7 says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. We just mentioned that a moment ago. We, as our church has developed with Brother McCray, he stipulated when we sat down that day and talked about the church in the name of the church. And he spoke about redemption and restoration. If you take a moment and time and think about that, you can understand what was on his mind. We all need to be redeemed. And his follow-up message was behind that, redemption and restoration, where the redeemed are restored and the restored are redeemed. We don't repeat that often, but that was his slogan for us because he knows that all of us are in need of help and, and we all need to be restored. Verse That's 7, right. for forgiveness of sins, redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. God's grace is not limited. If God's grace is not limited, then there's no person on earth that cannot be saved through the grace of God if they just turn their life over to God and accept Christ as their personal Savior. God's riches is not limited to just a few. They are there for everybody whosoever chooses to abide according to his will. Amen. So when somebody says then that if they've already know that they're going to be saved and God's already called them to a promised life in heaven with him, please correct them and let them know you have that incorrectly understood. Predestined only tells you how the glory and the greatness of God has already written the story. But within the story, the characters all, all had a choice in what they were going to do. God already knew what your decision was going to be. I thank God that I, I was created with enough sense to know that there was somebody who's greater than me and that there's somebody in, that was able <clears throat> to deliver us from the sins and the complications of this world. Amen. If you don't believe that, then the people we just prayed for, we prayed in vain because we know that God is able to get those up out of the sick bed. We know that God is able to heal the bodies where the body functions can work again. We know that God is able to comfort those who have gone through the pains of this virus and other health issues that we may not know. We know that God can solve them. We also know that God's got your finances under control because that's just who he is. Well, some would say that, but I don't feel that. Why is it that I'm close to being evicted and don't have a place to stay? Well, you on this side of heaven. Our life is on the other side of heaven. This world, we live in a world that has the prince of this world as Satan, and it's not pleasurable. But all we have to do is trust God in what he does. Whether he delivers us now or not does not indicate the failure of God. It only talks about the failures of us to understand because when we leave this world sickness death depression none of those will ever be able to follow us into the kingdom of god because god will also throw all that stuff away with satan gone a lot of that will be gone with death gone death will not haunt us any longer for those of us who lost loved ones Actually, they just started to live. We're the ones still living in the land of the lost on our way to the land of the living. And when we leave from here to go to our home with glory, we will never, ever have to suffer the things again that we've suffered down here. Because God has already provided us a home on the other side where he will be, where we will never have to go through sickness, heartaches, and pains ever again. 
you know that song uh, that I just mentioned those words, troubles, heartaches, and pain, all will be over. And we will look for that because God, just like he knew you before you were born, knew me before I was born. He already knew that we would need a place that would be better than what we got now in bodies that will never decay and break down again, where hatefulness and evilness will never be able to pre prevail. The one thing that is so exciting to me is every time I think about the fact that death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire, death and hell, death, I, can you imagine this? Death will be cast in the lake of fire. Death will never be able to touch another soul again. So all we have to do is trust in this awesome God that we serve. When we read his word and be able to see the beauty of who he is, that he's a God that is not short of his word. We can trust and obey a God that has never failed. We can trust and obey a God that has never lost a case in anything in the world. We can trust in the God that can tell us what our future is when he's also the creator of all the past. So I'm asking everybody to rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Regardless of who you are, where you are, what you've gone through, the story is not over. This is just a place, a temporary place that I like to say, uh, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. So when we think about what God has available for us, let us rejoice and knowing that they, the troubles of this world will soon be over after a while. We're living in the last days, I truly believe. I can't tell you when because God never told us when. And when you hear people talking about they know what year is going to be and all of that, uh, don't listen to that. Because the Bible tells us that we do not know when that day will come. And it says that it will come as a thief in the night. And a thief does not send you an invitation as the place and time that he's going to break in. So Christ is going to come just that quick. And the Bible says in the twinkling of an eye, all we have to do is be ready because the Alpha and Omega has already prepared our destination. So if you want to say that I talk with pride and authority, I do. Because just like he knew me before I was born, he predestinated us into the adoption of the children of Jesus Christ to himself. And in that family, we are one, one body in Jesus Christ. So let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Thank you for allowing me to talk about Ephesians, but I'm gonna encourage you to read Ephesians, all of Ephesians and Galatians. You say, that's a lot of reading. You got time <laughs> because the virus has made sure that we don't have places to go. So we don't have nowhere to go but to God and study his word. And once we start, it's going to be hard to let it down because the glory of God will come forth in your reading. Some of you may have already gone through that. All of you may have because God has blessings in there, but we've been too busy to enjoy them because we've been having too many places to go. In some ways, this virus has become a blessing to God's people because now you can't use the excuse that you don't have time. Mm -hmm. you know, you're at home. You got time. There's no place to party. You got time. You can't go into public places and mingle together without fear of all of that. You got time. So take the time and give God what he is due in your word, your prayer, and understanding. And let God show you the more miraculous things that he has, av has available for us right now. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.